another All right, welcome back to another episode of Building Better DJs with the Beat Junkies. We are your hosts, the Beat Junkies. I'm Babu. Mellow Deep. D Styles. Coming to you live from the Beat Junkie Institute of Sound. Um, going back and looking at battles again, guys. We are looking at this time the DMC 1989 World Finals. Um, and we're actually not even focusing on the winner. We're actually focusing on the runner-up for this battle, DJ yep. Aladdin. Yeah. Um, shouts out to Cutmaster Swift um, as well, who won the battle. But I think all of us agree um, Aladdin was a huge influence on all of us. Yeah, big time. Um, even before being able to see him on video. But I think like these, it's weird, guys. I think like, it was hard to get DJ videos back in the day, but I think this is one of the first ones I was able to get my hands on was actually this world battle. I think I went down to Melrose. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> and it must have been already 1992. You have the official DMC. Yeah, I found it. I found one oh, of wow. them. And it was just like, I didn't know how you'd get these things anyways, mm. but like I was at the right place at the right time yeah. at Beat Nonstop or something on Melrose, and they just happened to have this year, Damn, and, and, I, and I bought it. and um, So I, I wore this, this whole battle out, um, but this particular performance, what can you guys say about it? I haven't, I haven't seen it in a while, but um, like you were saying, just Aladdin just, uh, was just a major impact on just the game period. Just uh, to me, I, I remember listening to him, and um, and it shows a lot. <clears throat> we'll see it translating this video, but his style um, again, West Coast. I know there's always been you know discussion about using crossfader, and uh, back in the day with the older Newmark mixers with the toggle switch. That toggle switch sound was um, was very popular out here on the West Coast, at least in Southern California. For I don't sure. know about the Bay, yeah. but um, I mean, to me, I always remember listening to Aladdin, and always you know kind of listening to him from the perspective that. Maybe I can't. I couldn't help but feel that Joe Cooley was an influence on him, because they both had that very sharp, aggressive power scratch, toggle switch style down, like right. cold, right. like just beasting, like so. Um, and like I said, like to me, just to be able to like finally see it. I don't remember when I got this video or got a chance to see it, but to be able to see him do that live was like, and just you saw how how aggressive he was, like when he would scratch, and it makes total sense when you hear him, his cuts, you know. So yeah, yeah. I think it's important seeing him scratch because i think like i think that's a lot of, like where he really elevated djing was um just purely his technique mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was really another level than we had seen up to that point i mean don't get me wrong cash money the year before already was on some other shit but i don't know i got this feeling watching aladdin he raised it again oh yeah Oh yeah, you know, and, after, sure. and when I saw him, I was actually one of those people. Like I told you guys last episode, I was hating on clickers, but obviously, mm. anytime I hear DJ Aladdin, especially getting to see him, it really put that to rest. Yeah. Um, there's a sound you get from the clicker. Right, it's, it's, it's a different sound, and I really appreciated actually the kind of sounds that he was achieving that he probably would have only been able to achieve with with, with the clicker. And mm -hmm. you know, that fool will do it on any anything you give it to yeah. him. I think I think he would have made it work, but. Um, and he was also another well-rounded DJ, like right. cutting, scratching, body tricks, beat juggling, mm -hmm. um, just DJing in general. He was he really showed um, a good, well-rounded skill set. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he definitely took what what Cash Money did in '88, and and raised it and introduced some new um, techniques. I felt like you know just oh, yeah. the multitasking with with juggling. Uh, with the fader and then incorporating the the toggle switch yeah. you know what I mean it was, yeah, yeah, yeah I think he was doing a lot of early beat juggling to me too I've always kind of been a champion in, in thinking that Aladdin was planting a lot of early seeds into that more composed style that eventually turned into beat juggling I think because mm -hmm. I think up to up to 89 88 it was kind of very freestyle if you went into a mm -hmm. battle yeah. You know, if you watch a majority of DJ battles, it's like, I'm going to throw on, like, 
two copies of a record I know really well and right. like roll the dice. Yeah, Let me yeah, see how yeah. I do today. I'm just yeah. going to cut these up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. hopefully the needles don't skip. Hopefully that thing that I kind of loosely practice is like, yeah, I'm going to catch it. That one pattern, like maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. Right. Like maybe I might do something I never did my whole life. Yeah. It was kind of the style. But then I noticed in the seminar versus Miz and these DMC performances, we couldn't find a good copy of the USA of this year, which is um, the, the real performance for Aladdin. Um, but I think Aladdin started raising the bar too in terms of being a little bit more composed. Yeah. You know, really, I'm, I'm going to do this record and I'm going to do a certain routine and I'm going to hit certain patterns and do them, you know, really tight in a, exactly the same way every time. So, um, yeah, I always want to credit Aladdin for that on top of like just being an amazing scratcher. But yeah, shouts yeah. out to Aladdin. That's that's, yeah. our, that's our OG right there. He's that's right. One of the greatest. But let's talk about and let's watch this battle. We're gonna talk about it as we watch the '89 DMC World DJ Aladdin performance. Here we go. And by the way, this is a crazy battle too, guys. Right? By the way, we're it's live in London. The stage looks like a turntable. Yeah. I think Public Enemy. Uh, the Public yeah, Enemy performance. Yeah. Yeah. That was a performer. Yeah. Look at that stage. I Last year, the Damn. USA provided the world winner. Tony and he's Prince. On our panel tonight, down there, Cash Money. Young Tony. This year's entry from the USA has recently toured with LL Cool J yeah. and Ice T. What? He scratched on King T's album. What? He didn't enter his home heat in Los Angeles. He went to New York and whipped what? him. So let's hear it for the USA's entry. DJ That's a true story, guys. He went and competed in the New York heat and destroyed it. That's a whole other video. Just stunned. How gangster is this? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard, man. I haven't so seen this in so long. Perfect for you. Yeah, I love this. This is hype. <laughs> yes. Yes. Throwing signs. Yep, that's the set. I love this right here. Set. 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 I remember first time I saw this, I was like, dude, he has black turntables. How does he have black turntables? <laughs> so funky. It's like good old DMC camera work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't show his hands. This is a good angle. Hell yeah, right into it. Like he just made you want to DJ the way he moves, you know? Yeah. Oh. Okay, let's, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> was that the first time you guys seen someone bring the record back that Definitely, way? Definitely, yeah. That style? Yeah. That whole thing of where he's pushing, like, from here from and then pulling. Right. right. I, I, I tried to imitate that for days. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I noticed, I'd already turned my turntables sideways. Uh -huh. So it really made no sense for me to really do that. But I tried to do it anyways. Oh, man. You know, because it just looked so cool. But I really did think he achieved a certain sound by doing that but I think it yeah. was also a practical thing as you can see because he still rocked his turntables um, regular so yeah. right. that was kind of the open space more for him to get that off but but that whole that whole pattern that was the shit and then all those what do you guys call those? Those, those like those accenting transforms, like the those micro ticks, right? It's just it's just pure fucking funk. Like that's yeah. that was the epitome of it, right there. I think what was unique about the way he did it too, and Joe too, like they always had, I guess it'd be the equivalent of like a short release. Whereas like when other people would transform, kind of exposing more of the sound, theirs was always very like. Like very like very short and little, sharp little like, ticks oh, yeah because oh, yeah. like, they were just so like all over the board with the record like it just just got that that crazy sound like yeah. just, there's, there's nothing like it yeah. but I think like what you're saying too Babs like about that pattern like um, I know we talked about Cash Money a while back but so that that 
two, two, three, two, 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 three, yeah. two, 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 like people ran with that for years, oh, and decade. Right, right. Well, same thing with this pattern that we just saw Aladdin do, right? Like how many people were just dun 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 dun, 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 dun for the let the next like three, four DMCs. Like, yeah, you see people all do that pattern to a different record, right? Sometimes the same sound, record, yeah. you know. But like, right. yeah, definitely. Like, you think we're just talking about? I think New York calls that the the big mouth pattern, right? Big mouth, big yeah. mouth. Yeah. Choo, choo. But then, oh, right. yeah, was, but then, but then Aladdin, he, he, he swung it, yeah, he you know what I mean? It, yeah, he put yeah, his yeah. own, like, fucking, his, his flavor to it. Yeah, the big mouth powder. Forgot I just that. love the way Aladdin moved, man. Like, he just get me so hyped, just, even on his offhand, the way he would just, just cut in things, yeah. like, he just had such a, a, a flow with it, you know? He just looked like a naturally, right. um, man, just the technique was always the best. Anyways, back to Aladdin. Oh, did I just rewind? Sorry, guys. No, no, that's it. We're going to watch out one part again anyways, don't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Is that a new Mark 1150? It looks, it looks like, like it, yeah. yeah. Everyone was chewing gum during the yeah. war. <laughs> Cash is chewing gum too, huh? You guys ever chewed gum during the battle? Pretty sure. style too. Yes. Man, it's a lot of work right there. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Rocket. He goes off. All right, he goes off. Here. This is done. I forgot. records when they were done with them. Oh, man. Just I, like, I, oh, I, man. I, I so look forward to being able to go and toss my records, get on stage and throw my <laughs> records. <do> too. <laughs> Did you guys have someone to help you to, to hold the record? I, mean, I, I think Big Kid Drew helped out a couple times. Shout out to well, I, I think we did. We held oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We did. We used to, yeah. Yeah, yeah hit my records. Oh, shit. I'd love to, man. It's an honor. <laughs> Respect. Yeah. <laughs>
He had some skipping issues. Huh? He did have some needle problems. And I know we already mentioned it um, earlier. First of all, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. He murdered it. Um, but if we do run into the 89 USA Finals, we probably should have another episode and talk about that one. Right. Because like you said earlier, Mello, that was, Mello earlier off camera we're talking, what did you say, Mello? You said that one was kind of the one that really did Aladdin justice at that time. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously a fucking classic sick-ass routine, but I, I just feel like, you know, for people out there that have never heard of DJ Aladdin or weren't around for this era or haven't yep. even been exposed to it, like, you know, um, again, very impressive set here. This is a world stage, but um, yeah, I mean, I just feel like maybe the, the USA performance would kind of like um, spotlight a little more, like, you know, things that were special about yeah. about Aladdin and his style. But um, I actually was wondering why he didn't, do certain things that he did from the USA, yeah, Planet yeah. Rock, just yeah, feel Planet it. Rock, the bonus beats. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, mean, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like I mean, all that was like no one was doing that. That's right. Um, and and but nonetheless, uh, great moments in this one though. I think like the Rock the Bells part alone was like um, that was mind blowing. Pretty yeah. influential right there. I think on all of us and a lot of new shit. He, he a lot of new shit. Right there. He mm-hmm. was introducing just. I mean. Um, Gosh, just just the way he was articulating his scratches, man. It was just like just, it just sounded so crazy, man. Yeah. Every time he would just scratch, even on the simplest parts, it, it would just sound so different. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the way he would throw in records was was his own flavor. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and, and I like what you're saying too, D. Like him taking what what Cash did to another level. Yeah, I I, I never thought he bit, but he if we really strip it down, he would do a double. He would do some kind of something rhythmic, mm-hmm. maybe a body trick, and then break it down to one turn. Uh, very similar, similar to what formula, Cash right? Right, right. was was dishing out. Similar his, formula, yeah. His things, but like, you know, I think he really, obviously, he uh, he raised the bar. He put his own twist on everything, and um, right, yeah, that's one of the greatest performances in history. Aladdin, one of the greatest of all time, for sure. For yeah, sure, yeah. man. I know. I can't remember if we were talking about this off camera or when we started the this episode, but. You were you were you had touched on um, kind of like you know back in this day, like uh, a lot of the style. Um, it wasn't uncommon for DJs to just throw two co- copies on of a record and just go for it. You know, what I mean, no headphones, just like just going off a of feel. And we see a little bit of that here, right? Like right. in the Divine Styler, and I'm not Divine, sorry, Divine Sound, sorry, and um, with uh, the uh, was that a Get Up and Dance at right. the end, where he's just kind of you can you can tell like he's obviously you know feeling it. And, Exposing and then oh not there yet and then going oh, back like right, right. you know what I mean. Whereas I think in the USA I want to say I might be mistaken, but I think I do remember him using headphones like to to cue up. Okay. You know what I mean. And then at a certain point when he gets locked in, he just he takes them off down. and just yeah just right. gets busy. Right. But, uh, he, um, I mean the US the USA finals. I, I think he just had a better day. Yeah. You know like he he didn't have any needle struggles. Right. It, it seems like everything he attempted he pulled off. It yeah. was just it was just one of those days for him. Right. I totally. think. Um, Good point. Yeah. And. You know, I think like um, definitely, even though this was a more circulated video, the eighty the eighty nine USA is a hard video to find. I think, and even if you do see it, the quality is a lot lower quality than this. That, this was a this was probably like like I said, this is the first DMC official one I found, not a bootleg that a friend taped me of a tape mm-hmm. of a tape. Like I bought it on Melrose, so like this one, and you could tell from the the what were you saying? Deep Public Enemy was the the, the performer for yeah. the battle, the yeah. turntable, that that, that turntable stage. Yeah, I think this is like what Wembley Stadium or something, or something Somewhere crazy major. or Somewhere something. Major. Anyways, it was just a. Uh, I think this video was circulated a lot even before the YouTube days. I think this was like one of the like I said one of the first ones. I was yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I could really first time I seen a real official DJ battle, so yeah. it really impacted me heavily, and I think a lot of people around the world. And you see it too, like you're saying, Mello. Like for years after this, you see that transform pattern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you see like the scratching elevate to that. People start, you know, articulating their scratch, and that high level of transforming just became a standard. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see it one year later. All these oh, yeah. guys who didn't have that kind of transform game. Oh yeah. Incorporated. Yeah, nineteen ninety. Yeah. You better had. You better have had the transform scratch down. Like right, right. You know. Sure. But um, yeah. um, that was. Oh, go ahead. Dean. Sorry, not to get off topic, but I'm noticing he's probably using. So eighty nine. This is like the era of Stanton needles, 
Were, were you yeah. guys using Stanton? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Eighty nine. Looks like he's using the Stanton six eighties. Six eighties. Yeah, but then there was also the, the, the Stanton five hundred. Five hundred. That came later though, right? Six eighties. I think they were around the same time. Was he using the six eighties? Those tall. I had the six eighties. I just can't remember. Yeah. These Those are the tall, slender ones, right? The 680s. Right. They have like a little blue yeah, like, yeah, like square yeah. on it. Yeah, they are the 680s. It looks like it, right? Yeah, they look tall. Is that what you guys are using or the 500s? I was using the 500s. I did have 680s, okay. but... Oh, that could be the 500. Yeah. That's a good observation. I forgot about Not that. Sure. Yeah. Definitely looks like Stanton, though, right? And that was a, what, a, a, did we say an 1150, the Newmark? The Newmark like 1150. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Was that was that style? I know. You, I think we talked about this before, D. But I was just always curious because, like, I remember when the Bay came on the scene, or at least when we got exposed um, in Southern California to like what Bay Area DJs were doing. Like, was Aladdin's style, like you know, like that pattern, for example, was that as influential in the Bay as it was out here in LA? Was like Aladdin? I didn't hear um, anyone cut like that until I heard Joe Cooley and Aladdin, like right, that right, that right. swing and stuff. Like, uh -huh. yeah. I feel like that's very that's very LA. Right, right, yeah, right. And and I I definitely that fucking influenced me big yeah. time. So yeah. were DJs like uh, like kind of adapting what Aladdin did like after people heard it up north or was definitely. it more Yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I always I mean, wondered that. I mean, the Bay always had its own style like like Mike had his own style. For sure. Q. And I'm sure they they were influenced by that, but but that was so fucking unique. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. That one pattern, right? Right. What always tripped me out too was he um you guys remember the the rock the bell solo at the end of a lands on a rampage where yep. it just like goes right. off for like a minute like at the end right there uh -huh. like yeah that's where it just like really like he really just like just takes the hinges off and just like flexes on that yeah yeah so. i mean so correct me if i'm wrong man but guys like dj aladdin guys like cash money jazzy jeff to me those are like our our bb kings you know what i mean they they laid the the foundation of of the funk and just just overall like yeah you know they had every skill level um you know they can mix they can they can cut they can juggle yeah right? well-rounded yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah for sure yeah, no, okay. forefathers definitely mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah and uh what can i say guys it's been another great episode of building better djs for the beat junkies thanks for watching babu mellow d d stars see you next episode check us out peace peace